Okay, I'm squeezing this video out in like a day. Let's go. Cartoon Network's and HBO's Infinity Train is quickly becoming one of my favorite shows. This is, in no doubt, due to its phenomenal animation, unpredictable plot, massively intricate world-building, nuanced and realistic characters, a wonderful sense of humor, oh jeez, what doesn't the show have going for it? Part of the charm, of course, are the cars. Infinity Train follows a chain of different protagonists each season, each dealing with their own problems, as they traverse this train in which each car contains some new mini-universe. Most often this is in the form of some puzzle, which the passengers need to solve in order to access the exit door. The simple concept has led to some amazing storytelling and awe-inspiring creativity. I wonder where Infinity Train is going to go next. Uh, oh, mm. You could say I am the biggest nobody of them all. Unfortunately, it looked as though, yet again, the seemingly infinite narrative that is the anthology miniseries spectacular Infinity Train would be cut short, before the story proper would be finished. But once again, it looks as though we have hope. There's a movement going on right now to bring this show back. If you too would like to join in on the resistance, tweet, insta-post, or tiktok a size. How do you do, fellow kids? Hashtag finish Infinity Train. Let's get this trending as long as possible. We, my friends, are cockroaches. If we got season 3 and season 4, who knows? Maybe we can have season 5. Maybe we can have 8 seasons in a movie. Oh, mama. I shall do my part as well by ranking my top 10 favorite cars in the series. And no, the engine and the tape car do not count. They serve different functions for the train. It's not a fair comparison. Oh, also forgot about the short when writing the script, so we're not including that either. The lechecha, oh, French. Bow, 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 bow. Hello, I got a French speaking friend to dub over this part for me. Hello, French speaking friend. Hello, bonjour. Hmm. Hello, French speaking friend. Can you dub over this part for me? Le chasse My number 10 is the Le chasse car. I admit, I have a preference towards any car the cat happens to be in. She is the Stan Lee of this series, by the way. She makes an appearance in every season, but it was in the Le Chasse car when we finally began to learn something about who she is. The Le Chasse car does everything it needs to do here. It works simultaneously as a dose of warm, escapist comfort, and, as the episode goes on, tensions among the group run high, and comfort becomes claustrophobia. Oh, the show is so good! Mix that with a clever solution, and we have a breath of fresh Randall. Wait, I, I swear, this makes sense in the context of the show. Number 9, the art gallery car. There are as many unanswered questions in this car as there are... Mm. There are a lot of unanswered questions about this car. And I like it! We have one of the most horrific monsters in the entire series, and that is really saying something. But I am also left wondering about what this thing truly does to its victims. Just one look at the thing suggests that it probably isn't good. I also wonder whether or not this thing is even a part of the car, or if it is a part of something bigger and darker. I also like the mood of an abandoned art gallery, and well, it also probably has my favorite solution in the series. That's no good. Number 8, The Canyon of the Golden Winged Snakes Car. Okay, this one is easy. I love the way it looks. Every frame of this car looks like a frickin' meatloaf cover, man. But it does its job. It needed to be big and treacherous enough to force the party to collaborate with each other and get to know this mysterious newcomer named Amelia. There isn't a lot of thought to this one, I admit, but I don't really care. Who needs to think when you have giant golden winged snakes, man? Number seven, Toad Car, baby! I just adore the minimalism of it. Here's the gist. You have to kick the toad in order to unlock the exit, but the toad doesn't want to be kicked. 
Oh god, please don't kick it. It is a simple and hilarious moral crisis that miraculously has a sort of ethical resolution. Sort of? Number 6. Corginia. How can anybody say no to a kingdom of corgis? Look at his fluffy tail. I love him! Not only does this car introduce us to Atticus, but it does some very neat world building in a short period of time, really taking the time to explore what a kingdom operated by little adorable good boys would look like. This was the car also used in the network pilot, and it is no wonder it sparked an undying fanbase. When in doubt, just drop in a puppy or two. Or hundred thousand. Number 5, the pig baby car. Okay, I just love how fucked this one is. Number 4, lucky cat car. Ow, return of the cat. I'm sorry. This time, the cat built an amusement park in the middle of some random car, and in order to unlock the exit, you have to win enough tickets and pay her a lot of money. But things become especially complicated when our party is pit against another mysteriously masked passenger who competes with them for the door. Not only do I love the way this one looks, but I gotta appreciate the fan service. The cat invites denizens from all sorts of cars previously showcased in the series. This gives us a real blast from the past. Apex HQ is number 3. I guess there technically isn't much about this one, but the mall car really lingers in my mind. Particularly how this is one car that has since been ransacked and ruined and left a mere skeleton of its former self due to this group of heartless passengers. Presumably, this was just as whimsical and just as fun as, say, the ball pit car, or the camping car, or the toad car baby! But there has been some damage here, and it will clearly never recover. It is sad and melancholy without being overbearingly so. I wonder what this car looked like in its prime. Number 2. The Unfinished Car I do not think I can give up too much about this car without giving too much away, but it has so many fascinating implications for the rest of the story while being a fascinating mini-universe in of itself. Basically, we have a car that, due to mysterious circumstances, was never completed before being sent off to the rest of the train. Despite these circumstances, however, the denizens have adjusted, not only finding a way to survive in this half-baked car, but they thrive. And when our heroes attempt to fix things, that is where the conflict rears its head. There are just so many little details here to chew on, especially in the background. There is also plenty of goofiness and cool factor and turtles to satisfy at a first glance, too. Number 1, Chrome Car, Best Car, and I think all you need to do is look at it to understand me. But, again? I don't think I can give too much away without spoiling things. Needless to say, there is a lot of intrigue and puzzlement and melancholy and existential dread behind its gimmick. It raises some deep and intricate questions about what it would theoretically mean to be a reflection. There is so much lore in this car alone that it manages to feel an entire season later on. And here is the point. If they managed to squeeze that much out of a single car, just imagine how much Owen Dennis and crew could get out of four excellent seasons. There's a lot more to explore in Infinity Train, and I would give the world to see it. Here's the deal. If Cartoon Network decides, while the iron is hot, to make the investment and support the show now, then they could be a part of the future of animation. They could take the wheel as the entire industry scrambles to catch up with them. Because, sooner or later, YA animation is going to catch up, especially in a world where streaming services are dominant. Imagine, dear viewer, if Thomas Jefferson said no to the Louisiana Purchase. No, worse yet, imagine if Thomas Jefferson already bought the Louisiana Purchase and decided he wasn't going to send anybody to go explore this new, exciting, uncharted terrain. Sooner or later, somebody is going to make another brilliant piece of young adult animation, and somebody is going to decide to support it, and they are going to be the ones to kickstart an entire movement. This could be you, Cartoon Network. Just saying.